So the LG C2 42 inch variant is quickly approaching sometime next month in likely March or April maybe. We will be getting it on Thor shelves and it's going to be $1,900. That's pretty pricey for a 42 inch variant, right? But LG is banking on it being super popular and super successful and they're probably right. A lot of people up until this point have held off on getting an OLED TV precisely because they don't come in compact enough sizes. You know, 55 inches is just a little bit too big to use for most people as a PC monitor. 48 inches even is pushing it, but once you get down to 42, maybe a little bit later on, maybe 20, 23, 37, once you start getting into that range, a lot of people think, okay, you know, I think I can work with this. So a lot of people not having owned OLED products in the past is, is something they should know about OLED technology and how it operates. Organic light emitting diodes, okay? That basically means OLED TVs, they use organic compounds excited by electricity to create photons. And because this material is organic, it's subject to decay. And that is why OLED TVs tend to be a little bit more fragile. That's why over time they can develop image retention. That is why over time they can develop burn-in, whereas LED LCD TVs, they use a, a backlight system with light emitting diodes that illuminate the pixels, right? They're not using organic compounds, so they don't have to fear image retention as much or uh, decay, which could lead to burn-in, right? So what you should understand if you're gonna drop your hard earned $1,900 on an LG C2 is that there is a coin, I like to say, as it relates to mitigation features built into OLEDs to stave off burn in and image retention. On one side of the coin, you have ABL, automatic brightness limiter, it just takes full field bright white images and it dims them down to around 150 to 160 or so nits. And it does this to prevent temperature and voltage spikes within the internal circuitry of the panel. And it does this to try to ward off retention and burn in issues that could occur if ABL did not exist. So the other side of the coin, so one side you have ABL, the other side of that coin, you have ASBL, automatic screen brightness limiter, or some people call it automatic static brightness limiter. Now, right after the break, we're gonna talk exactly about what ASBL is, and I'm also gonna show you a quick demonstration showing ASBL in action on my LG C1. Let's get it. All right, automatic screen or static brightness limiter. Basically what this is, is after about 60 seconds of screen inactivity, so a static image on the screen, the TV is slowly dimming itself down. And once again, this is a burn-in and image retention mitigation feature built into the TV. It's trying to protect the panel. It's trying to extend the lifespan of your TV, of your OLED TV. Now, for some people, ASBL is not really noticeable and it depends on usage, right? If you're watching movie content, cable TV, uh, if you're playing video games, typically that means there's a lot of moving content on the screen. So therefore the screen's not gonna have an opportunity to become static. Therefore it won't dim, therefore you won't notice it. However, there are always certain movies or shows that do have static elements on the screen for greater than one minute. You could have two characters engaged in heavy dialogue where for whatever reason the camera does not pan or move, it just stays right on their faces. And so in that instance, theoretically, some people may see ASBL, they may see the screen start to dim. And if that is already a relatively dim screen to begin with, and then it dims down even more with ASBL, that can be detrimental to some people's viewing experiences. And I've read on Reddit and on ABS forum that some people have returned OLED TVs specifically because ASBL became too problematic for them. I know certain shows like Game of Thrones, they had a lot of dark scenes that could be static sometimes. And if you already dim down a dark scene, you're gonna basically make it unwatchable. And so that is problematic for sure. And that's something that prospective OLED buyers should be aware of. But generally it's, it's the exception rather than the rule, right? You're not gonna watch a lot of static movies. Typically there will be moving content. So it's not something that should bother you all too often, but just be aware it is there. Now, if you use your OLED as a PC monitor, then that is an instance where you will notice it more. And I do notice it once in a while because I use my C1, my 48 inch C1 as my PC monitor. So if you are on Reddit or you are on N4G and you're reading a long comment or you're writing a long response to somebody, which let's face it, we've all been there, right? 
The screen will be static for more than 60 seconds, so it will start dimming down. So if you're reading this long comment or writing and typing this long comment, you're gonna notice, what, what the heck, my screen is getting dimmer and dimmer. Once you scroll that mouse wheel and you change the image on the screen, the brightness suddenly comes back. Now I have a demonstration right here that I recorded on my LG C1 doing just that. So I let the screen sit static on N4G's message board here. It's a pretty bright screen, so you, you should be able to notice the dimming. Now what I'll do is I will fast forward this so you don't have to sit here for 60 seconds and watch it slowly dim. So we'll get to the 60 second mark, you'll notice some progressive dimming after that. And then you'll see me scroll the wheel on the mouse and the brightness suddenly comes back, it appears. So let's observe that now. And you can see it right there, the, the screen dimmed down and then the brightness came right back once I moved that scroll button on the mouse. So you have to ask yourself, how do you plan on using your OLED TV? If you're gonna use it as a PC monitor and you're gonna have a lot of static imagery, then of course you have to be concerned about image retention and burn-in in that usage scenario, but you also have to be cognizant and aware of the fact that something like ABL and ASBL will probably from time to time make themselves visible to you. So if that's something you can live with, great. Uh, if it's something you don't think will be too much of a hindrance to you, even better. I just want people out there to understand that these things exist and before they drop almost $2,000 on a 42 inch TV, I just want people to know that even though you hear about the beautiful contrast and color reproduction of OLED TVs, there are always uh, two sides to the story, right? There's, you know, I would say for every bad thing with an OLED, there are two good things. So I, for sure, I'm a proponent of OLED TVs. I think they are, the, the greats generally outweigh the bads, but just, I want people to have a holistic view of OLED technology and some of its pitfalls and also some of its strengths. So I try to keep things on the straight and narrow on this channel. I try to keep things open and honest with you and that's all I'm doing here. So if you are a prospective buyer of the LG C2, G2, or even the Sony 2022 OLED line, and you have more questions about ASBL, please, by all means, let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. So until next time, guys, I'll see you later.